we are just thrilled to have you here with us, Sarah, and I can't wait to hear your message. So take it away, Sarah. Thank you so much, Rev Nan, for having me. It's my honor to be here. And I'm just really thrilled to, to be here with all of you and to speak this evening. So my talk title, as some of you saw, is We Who Hesitate Are Lost. And when I was younger, I used to think of intuition as a sort of sixth sense. I thought of it as a, a natural instinct that we all have, but that part of us pay attention to and, and some of us don't pay attention to it. And we, sometimes we don't pay attention to it because we were either invalidated when we were younger around our intuition or we don't know how to pay attention to our intuition. And as I got older, I came to broaden my perspective on intuition and I, I understand it now as my direct connection and my relationship to God. So our intuition is that voice of God within us and it guides us every step of every day, holding our highest and best interest. And when we come to understand what intuition is, we can actually heed that call and pay attention to it and move in our lives with confidence. So Thomas Troward writes, the whole problem of life consists in finding the true relation of the individual to the universal originating spirit or to God. So when we really understand the true nature of our relationship with God, then our, our so-called problems vanish or diminish. So it's important that we first understand our relationship with God. God is the infinite field of consciousness that we are born out of and that we are part of. So we are created in the mind of God and we exist in the mind of God. We are individualized expressions of that loving presence. And so God is always guiding us and moving through our lives in all that we do. And that guidance is our intuition. It's important that we learn to listen to that voice of God within us and to hear spirit's call. And it's just important that we heed that call. We have to take action. We have to take that first step. How many times in our lives do we feel that pull towards something or that nudge to go in this direction? And a moment of hesitation arises so we suppress that call and we miss that opportunity. How often does that happen? I know it's happened to me. And so Wallace D. Waddles writes, by thought, the thing you want is brought to you. By action, you receive it. Our prayers are powerful. When we set intentions, there is power behind them. But if we don't take action on our own behalf, we can't receive it. Debbie Ford writes, prayer without action is not prayer, it's dreaming. I love that one. I want to share with you now a story about a man who had a deep faith in God. He was known in his town for saying quite frequently, life will just work itself out because God will take care of it all. One day a huge storm came in and a serious flood happened in this town. And while others were packing and fleeing, this man decided to stay put, believing that God would take care of him. Well, the water started to seep in through the doors and in through his windows and a fire truck drove by. And, and one of the firefighters called out and said, "Hey." Get on the truck, there's a flood. And the man replied, no, no, God will take care of me. Well, not long after, the waters rose up about waist high and the streets turned into rivers. And the Coast Guard boat sailed by and one of the crew members called out to the man, swim aboard, come aboard. 
And the man yelled back, no, no, God will take care of me. Well, the rain kept pouring down and the house flooded. And so the man was sitting on his roof and a helicopter came by overhead and the pilot got on the loudspeaker and said, grab a hold of this ladder and we'll take you to safety. And the man stayed true to his conviction and said, God will take care of me. Well, the man drowned. And when the man got to the pearly gates, he, he felt betrayed. And he called out to God and he said, God, I prayed to you. I called to you. I wanted you to answer my prayer. You told me you would always be there for me. And yet when I needed you the most, you weren't there. Well, God replied and said, what do you mean? I sent you a fire truck, a boat, and a helicopter. What more did you want? So <laughs> our prayers are not complete without our actions. Oftentimes when spirit is calling us, the call requires us to move into unfamiliar and unknown territory. And this can feel scary. It really can. And if we don't trust our own intuition, we can allow those fears to sway us. And we might believe we're making a mistake or we're making the wrong choice. But part of completing the prayer is facing those fears and stepping into the unknown with faith. So there's actually four parts to prayer. The first is setting the intention. The second is being receptive to spirit's call within us. The third, the third part is to take action and heed the call. But that fourth part that we sometimes don't anticipate is we have to face our fears in order to move through the hesitation and take action. And when we don't heed the call and we do succumb to our hesitations, oftentimes we become lost and we suffer. So I have another great quote from you by Marva, Marva Collins. If you can't make a mistake, you can't make anything. We are creative beings. We are meant to create. And if we're stifled by our own fears, we lose our sense of direction and we lose our sense of purpose. And we do suffer. A friend of mine reached out to me this past week. She's been in a job where she feels stuck for quite some time. She expressed that she's feeling depressed and that she's quite miserable. She told me she has all these gifts and talents and she doesn't know which one to pick. And so she stays in this job and she stays miserable. When we don't know our true relationship to God, it's tough to trust that voice within us. But when we do learn to trust that voice, we can rest assured that we can't make a mistake. And so we can, we can let go of those debilitating fears and take that step and face them and take that step into the unknown. And when we do this, we have the potential to improve and transform our lives. So I, I invite you this week to take a look at some area, any area of your life where you feel like you might be settling or you might be holding back. And be with it for some, some time and get clear about what it is that you're, what, what you're settling in and what you're holding back in. And then I invite you to just spend a few minutes each day practicing opening up and being receptive, receptive to that voice of God within you. And you don't have to spend too much time, just a little bit of time every day. And ask that voice, ask your intuition. What should I do that will serve me best in this situation? What should I do that will serve me best in this situation? And then just take a few moments 
of opening up and really listening for an answer. Now, if you're someone who's ignored your intuition for, for quite some time, the answer might take a while to surface. And so practice just a little bit every day, asking that question and then opening up for an answer. For some of us, the answer might come in an image. For some of us, it might come with a voice. For some of us, it might come with a strong feeling pulling us towards something. It's different for every person. But I, I promise you, when that answer arises in you, you will know. And when you have that answer, once you have it, face those fears and step out into the unknown and allow God to guide you and, care, and carry you every step of the way. I know that when we put that faith in that voice within us, that God voice within us, nothing can go wrong. And so it is in this knowing that I, that I move into prayer. I know that there is a loving presence, an infinite field of consciousness that we are all a part of, that we all partake in. We are born out of it and we exist within it. And there is no mistake in God. And so there is no mistake in us. Whatever our hearts desire, we can do, we can have, we can accomplish with faith. And I absolutely know for this community that they are touched and blessed by God, that we all here now are touched and blessed by God. We are lifted up into that presence, that loving presence that knows no wrong, that knows no mistake. And it is with this knowing that I express deep gratitude for this experience, deep gratitude for each one of us, deep gratitude for Rev Nan and for our beloved practitioner, Trazia, who did our opening prayer and for all who are part of this service. I know that we are lifted up and blessed right as I speak. And so I simply let our time go. I release it into that same loving presence that is God, that is love, that is light, that is known by many names. And so I let it go and I let it be, blessed be, and so it is. And so it is. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Let's give her some love here. We got to do a little yes. Thank you so much. What a beautiful message tonight. Very inspiring. I love it. I love it. So it's time for our offertory. And I just invite everyone to take their gift. I want to just say that our center has been blessed by the generosity and the divine flow of abundance that moves in and through each and every individual in our center. And I'm so very grateful for all the gifts that have kept this center going through a very challenging year and will continue to do so in infinite abundance. And so I just invite us to take our gifts and we have our little prosperity affirmation that I'm going to put on here. And as you take your gift, your time, talent and treasure and you place it in your hand and you hold your hand over your heart, you can just join me in saying, I give my gift with joy and delight. And again, I give my gift with joy and delight. And so having received these gifts from each and every being and those who are not with us tonight, I just take these gifts of great love from spirit that are the abundance of the universe that flow in through and as each of us. And I bless them knowing that they go forth doing good work in our community and good work in the world. And so it is. And I do have a little special, uh, well, I'm, we're going to do our interfaith candle ceremony right now. And then I do want to make a little special announcement tonight at, before we finish. So don't let me forget that. I don't think I will, but don't let me forget it. It's really great, Sarah, because when we have such an informal setting, you can just say, don't let me forget it. And it's okay. You know? Well, I forgot the meditation, so I did it while we were doing other things. <laughs> hey, you know, it's all good. So add a couple of minutes for this part, and we'll, we'll add it all. Well, we're good. 
Okay. So it, it is our custom uh, at our on our Wednesday night service to do um, to light the flames of faith that honors all consciousness of life. So Treasure, if you'd like to light our candle, we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all people and all faiths, all sentient beings, come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light this candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light this candle for shamanic tradition, honoring the beliefs and practices of in all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light this candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light this candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light this candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. And we light this candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light this candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. We light this candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. And we light a candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. We light a candle, this candle, for all those who are as yet unaware of the power and presence of spirit in their lives. And we light this center for the space that we hold for them here at this center. And we light this for all religions unnamed in this ceremony. And as we light this candle, we call to mind that infinite loving peace of the one. And knowing that this is so, we simply give thanks and bless all beings, all ways. And so it is. And so I do have a little special announcement before we finish tonight. This next Wednesday will be our last Wednesday night service. We're going to go on summer hiatus because the days are getting longer. Everybody wants to be out barbecuing and carrying on. And we will be back in the fall or when the weather gets icky again. Who knows? Maybe before then. But in the meantime, people will have time to get outside in the beautiful outside weather and sunlight. And we emerge from, our, from under our mushroom environment of COVID this last year. Be out and be able to barbecue and be in the garden and do all of those things that go with afternoon and evening in the cool time here that we can enjoy out in nature and in our yards and our families. So as is our custom, it is time for our special closing benediction. And you know we do this. So what I would like for everybody to do is place their hands over their hearts and we do our love blast. And so now knowing that that love, that divine essence of love is in the very center of your being, just allow yourself to be in touch with that love, to allow that love to bubble up in through and as you come out pouring through your heart center and filling your hands before you. Allow that fountain of love to just fill your hands to overflowing. And now bring your hands together and we rub them together. One, two, three, and we go whoosh. And out into our, our homes go the love, out into our neighborhood, our community, across our country we send that love, around the globe, and out into the cosmos, and beyond the beyond the beyond. And so it is, my friends. <laughs>